Good day everyone, my name is Hani, I'm the International Understanding Director of the Interact Club of Convent Klang. In conjunction with the Paget's Disease Awareness Day, our club are collaborating with Paget's Association UK to spread awareness on this disease. Today, we have Professor Stuart Ralston, the Chairman of Paget's Association UK, to help us understand more about Paget's disease. Professor Ralston, could you please say a few words to introduce yourself? Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased that your association is interested in Paget's disease and yeah, I'm looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Now, our interviewers, Interactive Anushree and Sabrina, will be asking questions sent in by students via the Google Form Creator. I will now be passing the floor to them. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, Professor. My name is Anushree and I'm the secretary of this club. I would like to say that it's such an honor for you to agree to be interviewed by us and help us raise awareness. Hi, I'm Sabrina and I'm the PR director of this club. I'm really happy you agreed to be interviewed because I feel like not many of us know this disease and we really want to raise awareness for it. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. There will be two sections of this interview. The first one will be about the disease itself and the second part will be more about your association. That's good. So without further ado, let's begin. Uh, the first question is, what is Edward's disease of the bone? Okay, so it's a disease in which the normal repair process of bone um, becomes abnormal. So if I can explain, normally all of our bones uh, during life are renewed and replaced in a very slow orderly fashion throughout life. <clears throat> and in Paget's disease, that process becomes accelerated. It goes much faster than normal and it causes the bones to expand and, and sometimes become painful. And that, that's what the disease is about. You get this abnormal, what we call bone remodeling. All right, thank you. And the next question is, what are the early signs of Paget's disease of the bone? Okay, thank you. Well, we know from research is that in people with very early Paget's disease, often they don't know about it, you know, for, for maybe many, many years. Uh, they don't know they have it um, because there's this abnormal process, but um, it takes probably five, ten years, maybe more for abnormalities to develop and that might be pain, that's the most common. And then sometimes the bone is bent and then sometimes people, their shin bone for example, they notice it's become bent. So sometimes that's the first thing that people notice. Sometimes they have a broken bone. So those are the things that, that people affected notice. But for many years people have, have no symptoms until quite a late stage. Thank you, Professor. What would you say are the common causes of this? Probably the thing we know most about is the role of hereditary factors or, or genetic factors in Paget's disease. And that is quite clear that that is very important. And sometimes Paget's disease will run in families. Um, it can be passed from mother to son or father to daughter. And um, we know many gene variants that, uh, that cause that to happen. We know the environment also influences Paget's disease, but we're not exactly sure which environmental factors. There has been a thought that in the past when things like vitamin D deficiency were common in rickets, um, that might make Paget's disease be more uh, prevalent, maybe changes in diet, maybe changes in exercise. But I suppose the most, the thing that we're very sure about is the role of genetics. And there's a lot of research going on to what environmental uh, influences can also uh, determine when the disease occurs. Uh, with that being said, how does the disease affect the bone? <clears throat> so I mentioned that in Paget's there's an abnormality of the repair process. So in the bone there are cells called osteoclasts which are responsible for removing bone. And um, so the job of osteoclasts go into bone and remove areas of damaged bone and then they go away and then that's replaced by what's called bone forming cells called osteoblasts. <clears throat> and in Paget's disease, what seems to happen is the osteoclast, that's the removing cells, you know, so that they are increased in number and they go crazy basically and they start resorbing too much bone. And as a result, there's also too much bone formation going on and, and that's, what, that's what causes the bones to weaken and become damaged. It's because this repair process is, is is abnormal and it's not happening normally. Thank you. Um, 
How is Paget's disease usually diagnosed? A couple of ways. Um, sometimes there's a blood test that a doctor that the doctor can take <clears throat> and there's a, a thing called alkaline phosphatase we shorten that to ALP so sometimes people with Pagets might have an elevation in ALP and that might be a clue sometimes it can be picked up on an x-ray <clears throat> and what we're seeing now increasingly uh, certainly in my country you know people have x-rays or scans for various reasons and sometimes Pagets is picked up uh, on the basis of those tests and that's how it's first diagnosed Thank you for the clarification. Since modern technology keeps growing day by day, how has it helped people affected by this disease? That's a very good point. Well, advances in genetic, that, that's been uh, really influential <clears throat> in discovering the genes that predispose to Paget's disease. Also, we have in medical imaging techniques, one of these is called a, a bone scan, a radionuclide bone scan. That's a very sensitive way of picking up the disease. So those two things can help us diagnose the disease and find out if there are genetic factors underlying. And in this year of the COVID pandemic, the association has used modern technology like this and like Zoom to communicate with our members that are have affected by Paget's disease. So that's another way we've been able to keep in touch with uh, people with the disease. As our audience are mostly school students, what do you think we can do to contribute to help people <coughs> with that's a good question. Well, as I say, Paget's does seem to be a genetically determined disease. There's not a lot that you can do about that. Uh, but we think that um, having a healthy diet, having enough vitamin D, those kind of things are all important in, in bone health. So, I, I, and it mainly affects older people, um, Paget's disease mainly affects people above the age of 50. So students like yourself would be very unlikely to get Paget's disease. Uh, uh, but perhaps your parents uh, or grandparents may and uh, obviously you can help them by supporting them. I should say um, it's unusual in in Asia, it's unusual in Malaysia, Paget's disease. And uh, so I think it would be unusual in your country, but we, we see Paget's all across the world. Thank you. And um, what led to forming the association? I'm really curious. <clears throat> How did the association get founded? Well, good question. The association was founded, I think it was in, gosh, I think it was, it was many, many years ago. 1989, the association was founded by a per person called Anne Stansfield. And her husband was affected by pageants. <clears throat> and she realized there wasn't an association for people who were had the disease. Uh, many people did not know about the disease. And that's why she founded the association. And it's been going ever since. That's very interesting, Professor. Um, where or how does the association get its funding from? Okay, well, <clears throat> we have members of the association that can, they, they have events, like they maybe run a marathon uh, and, and they raise money that way, or they will have a coffee morning or sell cakes and all of that, a raffle, all of that kind of stuff. Sometimes people, uh, maybe they've been affected by Paget's disease um, and they've been supported by the association and, and, and when they die, sometimes people will leave in their will uh, what is called a legacy uh, to support the association. And the association gets quite a few legacies and of course that is, although that's sad obviously, uh, because uh, we uh, people, you know, you have to die to give a legacy but it's um it's encouraging for us that we have legacies because it tells us that the association has been helping people who had the disease during lifetime so that is uh, those are the main sources we get no money from the uk government or anything like that so it's purely voluntary and donations right um what services does the association provide for people with the paget's disease Thank you. Well, we do quite a lot. <coughs> the um, There's a, what's called a helpline where uh, patients affected or carers can phone up um, to speak to one of the uh, one, our specialist nurse, Diana Wilkinson. And if they're not sure what the disease is, they can speak to her. Sometimes inquiries come on to me uh, and I can answer some questions or to other other doctors that are involved with the Pagets Association. Um, the other thing we do is that uh, we organize meetings for people that are affected or and their carers to tell them more about the disease. Um,
throughout the year um, and also we um, we support research into Paget's disease actually as well. <clears throat> so the association gives out research grants and the aim of those research grants is to um, uh, find out more about what causes the disease, hopefully develop new treatments and, and help things in that way. So it helps uh, people with Paget's and their relatives in, in, a, in a large number of ways. What made you personally join the association? <clears throat> okay, well, for a long time, I, in my professional job, I'm a rheumatologist and I see people with bone disease and joint disease. And um, when I was training, I saw a lot of people with Paget's disease and it, it not much was known about it then, very little about genetics. And it interested me greatly. And I started to research in genetics and I've done uh, clinical trials and different forms of treatment. So I've been involved with, with Paget's disease as a doctor and as a researcher for many years. And I think it's about three years ago now, the previous chairman of the Paget's Association, he decided he wanted to retire and they were looking for someone to take over and they asked me to apply and I did <laughs> and uh, so I've been chairman of the Pagets Association I think it's for the past two years or maybe a little bit over two years and uh, yeah it's been fantastic I, I, I really enjoy uh, working with the association and trying to publicize uh, raise awareness of the disease um, can I ask how hard it got because of the COVID virus and how different <coughs> it became yeah, it's been very difficult for us, not just with Paget's disease, but with all patients uh, with rheumatology. That's my specialty. It's been difficult seeing patients because they're kind of they're scared to come to the hospital. But um, I think we have procedures in place whereby patients can come up to the hospital, and we obviously are wearing our masks, which I have here when I'm at work. I'll have my mask on. And, um, and so patients can be reassured that it's going to be safe for them. And we can still deliver treatment. And of course, we can still do a lot online, which has really been an important thing for us. We can phone up patients, check how they're doing, all of this kind of stuff. And so we're hoping it's going to be better this year, uh, but I think it's going to be until the middle of the year. Can I ask, how has it affected you in Malaysia, the COVID pandemic? Well, I mean, like, it was kind of decreasing last year. I mean, like, ending last year, but then now it kind of spiked up again. So I guess we're just okay. hoping for the best and the vaccines. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Well, hopefully the whole world will be better. All right. Um, that's all for the questions. Thank you, Professor, for answering them. And it was just really fun. <laughs> I mean, it was really Thank nice. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, I, I'm very impressed that uh, your association has been has picked it, this up. I can't wait to see your Instagram page. <laughs> it's been oh. so nice talking to you all today. It really has. Thank you. And uh, now I'll pass the floor back to Honey, our MC. Um, thank you, Anushri and Sabrina. I think that's all for today. On behalf of IC Convent, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to Professor Ralston for your time and contribution um, to this project. Professor, would you like to say a few words before we end the meeting? Well, um, I, I, I'm going to say um, goodbye in Malaysian, which I think is Jumpa Lagi, and thank you for your interest. Yes. Yes, jumpa lagi, jumpa lagi. Right, jumpa um, lagi. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> jumpa lagi. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, okay, bye-bye. Okay, thank you.